Okay, so energy balances are all well and good, but we're going to have to start incorporating some other balances in our work. So to set that up, uh, I'm going to have us do one more energy balance and, well actually two, we're going to do two energy balances on two different, slightly different heat exchangers, and then we're going to do an entropy balance on those same heat exchangers. And the point of today's exercise is really to get us thinking about uh, why entropy matters uh, for thermodynamics. Okay, and why it matters in a practical sense, because maybe you've had this introduced to you before and you've thought about it disorder. Now uh, we want to think about it in terms of what the heck does this tell us about our chemical process? Like, why the heck should I be working this out? So, I'm going to give you two heat exchangers, and I'm going to give you the temperatures in and out, and I'm going to give you the flow rate of the cold stream, and then for each of these heat exchangers, I want you to work out the flow rate for the hot stream. Okay, so I'm going to draw these out right here so you can see counter current uh, is how I have them set up, although uh, because we're looking at energy balances, it doesn't change much. Um, also, I want you to use the steam tables for this. So our working fluid on both sides of this heat exchanger is water, heard me, and uh, with the exception of one of the streams, all of these are steam. Okay, so they're all water vapor, not water as liquid, with one exception, which you'll see in a minute. Okay, so uh, for the heat exchanger on the left, let's call that heat exchanger A, uh, you have a hot stream coming in at 250 C and, one, and 2 bar, and everything's going to be at 2 bar. We're approximating this as constant pressure. Yes, I know there's a pressure drop, but it's small with respect to whatever else we're looking at. Okay, and that hot stream is going to leave at 150 degrees C. We don't know its flow rate. Its flow rate is unknown. Now, on the cold side of heat exchanger A, uh, we have steam coming in at 120.3 C. Uh, so that is 100% um, steam. So when you look at the steam table, that should be right there, kind of at the bottom of the superheated table. Um, when I say bottom, the lowest temperature given on the superheated table for Two bar. Remember, two bar is 0.2 megapascal. In case you don't have that memorized yet. And then, uh, as the cold stream's coming out, it's been warmed up to 150 degrees C. Again, everything's at two bar, and I'm giving you a flow rate of five kilograms per minute on the cold side. So remember, you're trying to work out what's the hot side flow rate, and in kilograms per minute. Okay. So you should be able to do this. Go back and look at our tabulated energy balances. You don't have to re-derive it, you could just reuse the energy balance uh, that we derived before and just pull it out here. After you've solved that one, after you have a number, propose the number to the room um, on Slack or in person. Um, after you've solved that one, solve heat exchanger B. Heat exchanger B is going to look a lot like heat exchanger A, but I'm going to have changed uh, one of the temperatures. Okay, so the hot side, again, coming in at 250 and 2 bar, it's exiting at 120.21 degrees Celsius, which is exactly at saturation. And so I want you to consider that as a 100% saturated liquid, right? So use the liquid values from the steam tables, not the vapor value. So that's the one place I was telling you about where you're gonna use a liquid value. Uh, then uh, on the cold side, we've got the exact same conditions. 120.3 coming in at two bar, uh, so remember, that's 100% steam, and then exiting 150 degrees C and 2 bar. And um, I want you to just solve this, solve this energy balance. Let me know what fluid flow rate you get for the hot side for both case A, the heat exchanger on the left, and case B, the heat exchanger on the right. Okay? All right, now that you have worked out, or at least set up, the energy balances for those two heat exchangers, I want you to do something else for those two heat exchangers. I want you to complete a entropy balance. And when I write balance, you'll notice there's quote marks around it. We use those quote marks because unlike mass and momentum and energy, uh, entropy is not actually conserved. It, the entropy of the universe can increase, whereas the energy of the universe cannot increase. So, uh, we call it a balance because we, when a situation that we're looking at 
when a system can be done uh, reversibly, then the entropy of the universe does not increase, it doesn't go down, but the uh, entropy of the universe is unchanged. And that way, when it's a reversible system, we can, in fact, write a balance. Um, but we don't know what we've got today is a reversible system. So, open system entropy balance. Here is a nice convenient way to present this. Uh, and we're uh, giving ourselves multiple inlets and outlets in this version, and we're assuming steady state. So the left-hand side is going to start out as a zero because it's steady state. And then, kind of like we had with the, enthalpy, uh, with the energy balance, with the enthalpy term, we sum over all the inlets, S in times M dot in, and subtract off, summed over all the outlets. And uh, you'll also note entropy, S, is a state function. You can look it up in the steam tables. So you're going to look it up and plug it in there to solve this for our heat exchangers. Now we have another summation term. Over all external surfaces, Q, or the rate of heat exchange, Q dot, over T. In the case of our heat exchangers, this should be zero, right? Because we don't have a uh, heat exchange with the outside, but Q over T is there for when that's not the case, plus S gen. Okay, and this is this is the money term right here. S gen in this case dot because we're talking about a rate. Here's the rule about S gen. S gen represents the increase of entropy of the whole universe. So it's a thing that can be zero in the case of a reversible process, or it's got to go up. So S gen always, always, always greater than or equal to zero. And so you say, well, you know, how do I how do I work with this in an equation? It's almost always an unknown. There aren't back doors to it. So what you could do is for these heat exchangers we just did, I want you to apply this entropy balance to heat exchanger A and to heat exchanger B and calculate, because you know all the other terms, calculate S gen dot in both cases. Okay, can you do that? Let's go.